Welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about CRISPR-Cas9 in genome editing. In the last lecture, you have learnt about the basics of CRISPR-Cas9 uh, systems and various uh, other similar systems. Today, we are going to learn how these systems are used in genome editing. So, you can see this picture uh, where you have a big protein molecule called Cas9 uh, and then you have uh, one guide RNA and then there is a sequence called PAM sequence and this is a target DNA. So, when this CRISPR Cas9 system along with the guide RNA binds to a target DNA, it will cleave the DNA. So, this is uh, known to you. Now, uh, today we are going to discuss a little bit more about uh, the other facets of uh, CRISPR-Cas9, uh, which you know is a uh, now the most versatile and efficient genome editing tool uh, currently and it has been used uh, widely for genome editing experiments ranging from cells uh, to various uh, organisms. Uh, this CRISPR-Cas9 uh, based genome editing has various applications such as in the production of uh, disease models uh, for which we will have uh, a lecture later on, then development of therapy for disease or gene therapy, then increasing yield in uh, livestock, agriculture as well as uh, bioprocessing and elucidating the role of various genes and pathways in uh, disease biology. Uh, apart from the primary role of gene or uh, genome editing, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 systems has been now repurposed for numerous other applications like transcription regulation, genetic, epigenetic editing, uh, chromosome imaging, biosensing and diagnostics. Let us see uh, uh, a little bit uh, closer the difference between a nacelle system and a artificial uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, system. So, in figure A, uh, you can see uh, there is a uh, guide DNA or the target DNA with a uh, PAM uh, sequence and then you have uh, the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, nucleage and you can see here the CRISPR RNA and then you can see here the tracer RNA. So, in this uh, natural uh, guide RNA type 2 system, uh, which is also termed as the CRISPR RNA tracer RNA complex. It consists of individual tracer RNA and CRISPR RNA along with a Cas9. While if you look into the lower picture B, you can see uh, there is no any CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA, but there is a single guide RNA, but you can see some sequences are very, very uh, similar to CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA as shown by the color uh, codes. So, this is an artificial single guide RNA which is constructed by linking individual CR RNA with a tracer RNA through a linker uh, molecule. So, uh, artificial guide RNA is constructed by linking individual tracer RNA with an individual CR RNA through an artificial RNA linker. Genome editing with CRISPR class 2 system is carried out with artificial single guide RNA systems. A modified RNA as the RNA which carries both sequences uh, one to generate double stranded breaks and the second for a homology directed repair is termed a chimeric single guide RNA or CG RNA. So, some of the things we can do with CRISPR-Cas9 is uh, we can uh, use them for producing animal disease uh, models. Uh, we have some uh, lecture uh, in, in uh, one of the future modules where we will discuss in detail about uh, these applications, but uh, this is just to brief you that gene knockout and knock-in in animals are extensively used to study the various aspect of uh, disease biology. And uh, similar to ZFN and Talon, uh, CRISPR has also been used with high efficiency in many cases to knock out a gene by disruption through double strand breaks followed by 
non-homologous joining repair or by inducing mutation through uh, DSB followed by uh, SDR. A CRISPR inducing double strand breaks followed by SDR with donor DNA sequences can result in generation of a, a knock-in uh, organism. Germline editing by uh, CRISPR can produce knockout or knock-in in progenies with heritable gene modification. Uh, CRISPR has also been used to produce conditional knockout organisms when used along with two LOXP containing single stranded uh, oligonucleotides. Many such new advancements have resulted in rapid and highly efficient conditional knockout or knock in animal uh, production. CRISPR is also being uh, uh, used uh, in, in gene therapy uh, increasingly. Uh, and uh, various experiments are uh, in, in different stages of development including some in clinical trial stage. So, uh, it has huge therapeutic potentials in future. We know that heredity uh, diseases are caused by monogenic inheritances or polygenic traits uh, inheritances or genes. Those caused by monogenic inheritances such as uh, uh, Duchenne muscular uh, dystrophy or DMD, uh, sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia uh, have been targeted by CRISPR gene therapy uh, with significant success and are currently under clinical uh, trials. Uh, CRISPR Cas9 based genome editing therapy can lead to the restoration of gene function or compensation of the mutation which causes the genetic uh, disease. SNP editing uh, has been performed with different strategies uh, as well such as knocking out the gene that causes the disease or introducing a protective mutation or adding a therapeutic uh, transient. When the disease is caused by a virus, cleavage of viral DNA can be performed by CRISPR Cas9 as reported by Rodriguez uh, in 2019. Now, uh, let us have a closer look uh, in these, uh, into this uh, figure and you can see here uh, there is a uh, mutated gene inhibitor and uh, this is the mutation as shown in red color which has happened. Due to this uh, mutation, the, when this gene is transcribed and translated, uh, it may uh, become uh, misfolded and is it as it, as it is uh, uh, misfolded? If it is an inhibitor protein, it won't be uh, able to act like an inhibitor to the activator, and therefore it will accumulate inside the uh, cell system. So, if a mutation in a gene is uh, difficult to repair uh, due to its genomic context, a pseudogene present could be activated to replace this mutated gene. However, if the cause of the disease is a protein that harms the organism by its anomalous characteristics such as by misfolding and accumulation as shown here uh, in a tissue, uh, for example, uh, amyloidosis, its expression could be downregulated at several points in its pathway of expression by applying CRISPR uh, Cas9 uh, technology. So, these are uh, various uh, uh, representations by which uh, we can deploy different strategies for preventing inhibitory protein from being produced. Uh, let us study them one by one. Uh, in the case of B, uh, we can knock out the gene that codes for receptor, preventing it from acting on the pre enzyme and from producing activator protein. In C, uh, we knock out the gene uh, that codes for pre-enzyme preventing it from acting on the pre-activator protein and from producing activator protein. Uh, in strategy D, we knock out the gene which codes for pre-activator protein preventing the enzyme acting on it from producing activator protein. And in E, uh, we have a mutation of the binding site of promoter so that the activator protein uh, cannot uh, bind. Uh, there are other two uh, strategies as well uh, like uh, strategy F where editing of a 
defecting uh, defective gene to restore production of an inhibitory protein to produce a functional inhibitory protein. And in case of uh, strategies D, uh, the mutations in the inhibitory gene are uh, difficult to repair. The pseudogene inhibitor is repaired to produce a functional uh, inhibitory protein. Uh, another strategy uh, involves uh, the strategy as shown in H. Uh, for example, if a deleterious mutation is difficult to repair and cause the accumulation of a misfolded protein, the gene could be totally inactivated and the pseudogene can be reactivated to produce a functional protein. In yet another strategy, uh, the addition of the functional cDNA of the inhibitor gene in any of the genes or pseudogenes stimulated by the activator uh, protein is uh, undertaken and shown in this uh, picture. In this strategy G, uh, J, you can see the mutation of the enhancer which results in reduced production of the uh, inhibitor uh, protein or lesser accumulation of the misfolded protein uh, finally. Let us look into the various uh, events or uh, developments in the field of gene therapy and CRISPR-Cas9 uh, highlighting uh, the major events of uh, traditional gene therapy and then uh, CRISPR gene therapy along with the development of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. So, uh, the first application of gene transfer started in uh, 1989 and the next year 1990 the first gene delivery for therapeutic uh, intent in other skid patients was uh, completed. In 1993, uh, the CRISPR locus was described. We have uh, discussed about this uh, earlier. And in 1999, uh, Jesse uh, Gelsinger did uh, occurred from gene therapy induced immunotoxicity, which was an unfortunate event. And also in 2000, gene induced, uh, gene therapy induced leukemia in other skid patients were reported. So, uh, these two events uh, was a setback in the uh, progress of uh, gene therapy and uh, uh, it took many years to uh, uh, bring uh, gene therapy back into clinical trials uh, due to these uh, events. So, by 2002 the term CRISPR uh, was uh, developed as you all know and uh, in 2005 the Cas9 was identified as a single effector and the nucleus and the discovery of spaces uh, transcribed as CRNAs were identified in 2008. And uh, in 2010, the CRISPR Cas9 uh, was identified as an adaptive immune system in prokaryotes. And in 2012, uh, 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 tracer RNA identified to form duplex with uh, CRISPR RNA to guide the Cas9. Uh, by 2012, uh, single guide RNA constructs were developed for simplification, uh, which we have uh, discussed uh, in, the, in the earlier slides. And in 2013, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing was achieved in uh, mammalian cells. In 2017, the first CRISPR clinical trial for treatment against HIV-1 in uh, China was conducted. And uh, uh, in the same year, the first CRISPR germline editing in implanted human embryos were also conducted and we have discussed about these uh, controversial experiments in the, in the development of CRISPR-Cas9 technology earlier. In 2018, the first CRISPR clinical trial for cancer immunotherapy uh, it was carried out in USA and in 2019, uh, first in vivo CRISPR clinical trial for treatment against uh, blindness uh, in USA uh, happened. So, this is in brief the timeline hi highlighting the major events of gene therapy starting from the traditional gene therapy to the CRISPR uh, based uh, gene therapy. So, CRISPR Cas9 technology is a versatile technology as you know. So, it can be used in uh, various kinds of uh, uh, gene therapies, uh, particularly those controlled by uh, monogenic uh, genes. Uh, but as uh, this uh, technology uh, is uh, uh, quite versatile and flexible, it is also possible to transfer multiple genes 
And so, uh, theoretically it is possible to uh, also uh, attempt for a gene therapy which involves uh, polygenic uh, factors. Let us take some uh, examples of uh, uh, potential areas where uh, gene therapy through CRISPR-Cas9 can be undertaken. Uh, for example, uh, the neurodegenerative uh, disease area or NDs are uh, some of the potential area in, in which CRISPR-Cas9 can play a very critical role. So, these neurodegenerative diseases are characterized by the progressive loss of uh, neurons in the brain as well as in the peripheral nervous system and the deposition of proteins uh, with altered physicochemical uh, properties. So, certain uh, proteins like uh, beta amyloid, uh, synuclein, uh, Huntington protein, prion, tau and so on uh, uh, are the most common proteins that contribute to uh, diseases like Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, Huntington's and uh, transmissible uh, spongiform encephalopathies, tauopathies, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, etc. And these proteins are used to classify the NDs or the new, uh, neurodegenerative diseases at the molecular level. Let us focus on the targeting of uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, uh, from the point of uh, gene therapy. So, uh, the therapies uh, uh, developed for targeting Parkinson's disease uh, can be of two types, uh, the disease modifying therapy or the non-disease uh, modifying therapy. In disease modifying therapy, the uh, platelet derived growth factors, glial cell line derived neurotrophic factors, then uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor and uh, neuterine are several disease modifying targets that can disease the uh, decrease the development of uh, uh, the Parkinson's disease. While in the second type factors like uh, uh, VGFA and uh, cerebral dopamine neurotrophic factor are symptomatic, uh, symptomatic and they target uh, GABA or uh, dopamine synthesis. So, this is just a schematic of uh, Parkinson disease. Uh, uh, you can see here uh, there is damage in the mitochondria and then uh, oxidative stress, autophagy and uh, proteins like alpha synuclein uh, uh, involved in this uh, disease. So, uh, you, you can develop certain uh, targeted uh, therapy against uh, uh, Parkinson's uh, disease. And for uh, delivering these uh, therapies, we may have uh, various uh, delivery methods like microinjection, cationic polymers, then or you can use uh, virus or electroporation uh, for the delivery of uh, CRISPR-Cas9 based uh, targeted uh, gene therapy in Parkinson's disease. And then uh, also for studying these uh, particular disease, we may create uh, cellular models or animal models and uh, we can also develop uh, genetic uh, therapy uh, for PD as uh, discussed. So, gene editing has the potential to uncover the molecular basis of Parkinson's disease and find the new therapeutic uh, targets and eventually generate a new gen uh, genetic uh, therapy. The upregulation and downregulation of gene expression or selective editing of key genes known to be modified in PD such as uh, PRKN, GDNF, P PINK1 and AADC can be used to correct defects in the molecular pathway related to Parkinson's disease. Uh, gene editing is uh, a viable technique uh, particularly the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology for restoring the activity of the important biological pathways that are interrupted and potentially uh, contribute to development of Parkinson's uh, disease. So, now uh, we know that gene editing is a viable approach for restoring the function of essential biological pathways that have been disrupted and uh, has resulted in uh, Parkinson's disease symptoms. Based on the therapeutic goals in uh, Parkinson's disease, four strategies are adopted as described uh, below. The strategy number one is enhancement of dopamine synthesis to boost brain uh, bioavailability. Strategy number two, uh, 
uh, is to increase the availability of neurotrophic factors and uh, neuromodulation in the subthalamic nucleus to stimulate brain regeneration. And uh, strategy number 3 is to focus on genes which are involved in mitochondrial pathway and, uh, and, and mitophagy. The last strategy uh, focuses on decreasing on alpha alpha cyanucleine synthesis uh, which would help to alleviate the effects of modified uh, mitochondrial pathways. Now uh, all these different strategies would involve uh, different kind of uh, CRISPR Cas9 uh, methods. In certain cases we would like to induce certain mutations, in other cases we would like to uh, replace uh, DNA uh, fragments or sequences. So using CRISPR Cas9 uh, there is a huge uh, uh, potential uh, of uh, uh, developing therapies uh, for uh, Parkinson's uh, disease. Let us now discuss a little bit about the delivery of uh, CRISPR uh, gene therapy. Uh, while discussing uh, the development of uh, Parkinson's disease, we have come across some of the uh, delivery methods. Uh, now we will a little bit uh, have a detailed discussion on some of them and uh, in additionally a few more. So we know that uh, virus vectors uh, can be used for delivery of uh, gene therapy. AAV vectors are known for high efficiency of delivery and it is widely used for delivery of CRISPR components inside the cells uh, for gene therapy. The CRISPR components uh, can be packaged as plasmid DNA and coding its components including Cas9 and guide RNA or these can be delivered as mRNA uh, of Cas9 and gRNA. The challenges associated with AAV vector is that it can induce viral toxicity and the CRISPR components undergo longevity of expression resulting into potentially high incidence of off targets. So we will have some discussion how to take care of these off targets in one of the uh, sections later. To avert the virus associated risk it can also be introduced to target cells uh, via electroporation, nucleofaction or uh, direct uh, micro injection. Microinjection is only suited for ex vivo delivery while electroporation is also uh, largely used for ex vivo uh, and, and, and not in vivo uh, delivery. The delivery of the Cas9 protein and guide RNA as uh, ribonuclear protein complexes has reduced off target uh, effects while maintaining uh, 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 editing uh, efficacy owing to its transient expression and rapid clearance uh, in, the, in the cell. So here you can see uh, in brief the overview of the various uh, delivery methods and uh, here you can see the various components and the various delivery methods and once these are delivered they end up in the nucleus where do they bind to the genome and carry out the desired genome editing or engineering. So the <coughs> synthetic guide RNAs can be applied to a variety of CRISPR-Cas9 experimental approaches. A dual RNA can be co-delivered with Cas9 uh, mRNA, uh, Cas9 uh, protein or Cas9 expression plasmid or delivered into a stable uh, Cas9 expressing uh, cell. So these are the various uh, approaches. Delivery can be achieved using a variety of methods like electroporation, injection, liposomal nanoparticle particle delivery, then uh, conjugations to delivery moieties, uh, etc. Let us focus a little bit on ex vivo delivery. So what do you do in ex vivo delivery? In ex vivo editing target cells from the patients are extracted. We take out the cells from the patient in whom we are going to carry out the uh, 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 genome editing, whether uh, for uh, uh, gene therapy or for other cases. These cells are cultured and uh, uh, multiplied or expanded in vitro. 
the CRISPR components to yield the desired edits are delivered through any of the methods of delivery which we have discussed earlier including viral uh, delivery. The edited cells are selected and expanded and uh, finally reintroduced into the patient cells. So, these are the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 components along with the various delivery vehicles which help, uh, help us in delivering the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, components into these cultured cells which are expanded and the therapeutically edited cells are uh, re-implanted into the patients. So, this is the process by which the ex vivo delivery of um, uh, genome mediated uh, constructs are being done. In vivo delivery as the name suggests, uh, it is direct delivery into the body. So, here the components can be systematically delivered via intravenous infusion uh, to the patient. The CRISPR cargo travels through the bloodstream via arteries leading to the target tissue or locally delivered with injections directly to the target tissue. Once delivered, the edits are facilitated in vivo to produce uh, therapeutic uh, delivery. So, these are the components and these are packaged and this is being delivered directly through injection uh, into the patient's arteries and it travels and lands up in the desired tissue. Let us now discuss uh, in, in uh, specific uh, the therapeutic gene editing by CRISPR-Cas9 uh, taking some examples like uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, which is a severe muscular degenerative disease and it is caused by loss of function mutations in the dystrophin gene located on the X chromosome. Uh, DMD is caused by exon loss, uh, exon duplication or disruption of the protein reading frame in the 79 exons that compose the dystrophin gene. CRISPR-Cas9 has been used uh, successfully to target uh, DMD. One of the most common deletions in patients with uh, DMD eliminates exon 50 in the rod domain of dystrophin which places exon 51 out of the frame with uh, preceding exons. The second most mutational hotspot in the dystrophin gene uh, includes the exon 44 which disrupts the open reading frame in surrounding exons. Uh, Min et al. Uh, used CRISPR-Cas9 to edit surrounding exons around disrupted exon to restore the dystrophin open reading frame that resulted in correction in about 12 uh, percent of the patients. So, as already discussed, uh, we take the uh, harvest the cells from the uh, patient. So, here uh, we are taking patient derived induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh, so, these are generated from the peripheral blood mononuclear cells uh, of a patient with DMD uh, lacking exon 44 of the dystrophin uh, gene. So, here this is a semantic of the procedure for deriving and editing patient with DMD derived IPSCs and IPSC cardiomyces. So, here uh, the cells are uh, reprogrammed and this is uh, the DMD IPSCs and we do the editing and these are corrected DMD IPSCs allow them to differentiate and these are the corrected DMD IPSC derived uh, CMs. IPSC is also able to generate from patient's uh, uh, brother with a normal dystrophin gene as a healthy uh, control. The DMD IPSC can be edited with CRISPR-Cas9 tool followed by optimized editing to make uh, corrections. So, you can see here uh, deletion of uh, exon uh, 44 uh, which we refer to as del EX4 which is uh, shown in black uh, here. So, these uh, del uh, EX4 disrupts the open reading frame of dystrophin by causing splicing of exon 43 to exon 45 and uh, introducing a premature termination codon in a diseased uh, condition. The reading frame can be restored by using 
CRISPR Cas9 gene editing to skip exon 43, which allows splicing between exons 42 and uh, 45, or to skip exon 45 alternatively, which allows splicing between exons 43 and uh, 46. You can see here 43 and uh, 46, and in the first strategy, the exon 42 and the exon uh, 45. Alternatively, reframing of exon 43 or uh, 45, uh, you can see in green color here, can restore the protein reading frame uh, by inserting one nucleotide or deleting uh, two nucleotides. So, you have plus 3n minus 2 deletion or uh, plus uh, 3n plus 1 uh, insertion. Uh, in these cases. SGRN design and optimization of uh, editing. Uh, more than one SGRNAs uh, were selected uh, by the researchers, which permit deletion of the splice receptor or donor sites of exons 43 and 45. And this allows splicing between the surrounding exons to recreate in frame uh, dystrophin. For editing exon 43, 420 nucleotide single guide IR RNAs named G1, G2, G3 and Z4 directed against sequences near the 5 prime and 3 prime boundaries of the splice junctions of exon 43 was selected and for exon 45, 4 18 to 20 nucleotide single guide RNAs named as Z5, 6, 7 and 8 to target the 5 prime boundary of exon 45 within the conserved region of the human and mouse genome was designed. Two of the four single guide RNAs for exon 43 efficiently edited the targeted region and all four single guide RNAs for exon 45 generated precise cuts at the conserved region. The PSP Cas9 BB2A GFP plasmid contained a human colon optimized SP Cas9 uh, was used where cloning of single guide RNA was uh, done using BBS1 site and PX458 SZRNA2A GFP plasmid uh, was nucleoaffected with uh, into IPCs, I IPSCs. In a figure C, you can see the sequence of single gen RNAs targeting exon of 43 splice acceptor and donor sites in the human uh, DMD gene. The Protospacer adjacent motif PAM denoted as the red nucleotide of the single guide RNA is located near the exon 43 splice uh, junctions. Exon sequence is represented by letters in bold uppercase. The intron sequences are rep represented by letters in the lowercase. You can see the arrowheads, uh, they show the sites of Cas9 DNA cutting with each single guide RNA, splice acceptor and donor sites are shaded in uh, yellow as you can see in the picture. Figure D shows the sequence of single guide RNAs targeting exon 45, a splice acceptor site in the human DMD gene. The palm denoted as red nucleotides of the single guide RNAs is located near the exon 45 splice acceptor site. The human and mouse conserved sequence is shaded in uh, blue light. Uh, color, uh, light blue color. The exon sequence is represented by letters in uh, bold case uh, and the intron sequence is again represented by letters in the uh, lower case. Uh, in this figure E, you can see the uh, dystrophin expression was uh, analyzed by western blot and uh, blotting and immunostaining uh, to confirm restoration of dystrophin protein expression in the edited Del EX44 IPSC CMs. The levels of uh, dystrophin protein expression in these uh, mutants edited with single guide RNAs uh, G4 and G5, G6 were approximately comparable to those seen in healthy uh, control as you can see in this uh, gel picture. So, with these we come to end of part A of this lecture. Uh, we will continue the discussion of various aspects of CRISPR-Cas9 technology in the next part. Uh, thank you.